Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We're still talking about flow measurement and today we're talking about vortex flow measurement. Well, what is this? Imagine we have some flow huh? and then we have a body which is blocking the flow and its form, it has a specific form, yeah, something like this. And here we have the flow. The flow is approaching this direction. Then at this body, yeah, depending on the form, more or less, yeah, there will be vortexes. There will exist vortexes. So we will see here a vortex. And also here a vortex. Here vortex. And they will alternate. And at some point in time they will disappear. Yeah. So we have one vortex after the other and this vortex is is getting loose of the body yeah, and is drifting and there's always one vortex in this direction, the other vortex in this direction and, and they are alternating those vortexes. This is called a uh, vortex street. Okay, it's called vortex street. Vortex chain, vortex street. It's from an Hungarian physicist. Uh, he described it mathematically, Karman. And if the body has a certain form, uh, then this frequency of the vortex is proportional to the flow. Okay, so frequency of vortexes is proportional to the flow. passing by is proportional to flow. Okay. And I put in here a measurement device. Here there is a measurement device. And this will one time, it will be pushed in this direction, then it will be pushed in this direction, it will push in this direction. And from this vortexes, from the frequency of the vortexes passing by, it will always be tuk, 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 and out of the frequency, I can measure how much flow there is. Okay? And now I build this all together in some sort of, of tube. And that's actually it. Huh? That's vortex flow measurement. All right. This is how this is working. This here, uh, this from from the back, it looks like that. Uh, so that we have somewhere uh, a place where this is. And this is really not moving far. Yeah? So this is not really a moving part. It's just, you know, pushed in this direction, pushed in, pushed in this direction, pushed, pushed in this direction, pushed in, pushed in this direction. And here we have a capacitive way measurement. Yeah? So capacitive way measurement. Position. measurement and this will this is the tube here and this will indicate whatever and here the frequency and here we have this this body uh, Solid body. Okay. 
Yeah. Vortex flow measurement. So what are the benefits? What are the benefits? It's a universal principle. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter if you measure gases, liquids, yeah. universal. So gases, steams, liquids. It's really not sensitive to pressure, temperature, uh, even viscosity. Temperature, pressure, viscosity. Changes. Not sensitive at all. It has high long term stability. So it doesn't really change over time. Yeah? There are almost no moving parts. This is not really moving, like I said. Yeah? No moving parts. It's always indicate no high long term stability. Yeah, we have a very good dynamic. So flow changes are rapidly transferred into measurement changes and we have a big temperature range. We can go down to minus 200 degrees Celsius up to 400 degrees Celsius. So steams and so on. It's no issue at all. Okay. Sounds already perfect, right? However, there are also downsides. Yeah? And the downsides are there is a very long, yeah, really long, long run in and run out distances. Are needed. Okay? And we have, of course, because of this solid body inside, permanent pressure loss. And if we have something inside, this is also not very working very well. Eh? Accuracy, accuracy. Zero to five to one percent. Vortex flow measurement. Pretty good principle. Pretty good principle. Good. Uh, next time we are talking about displacement flow measurement. Uh, which displacement I'm talking about, I will explain in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.